Hello everyone and welcome to my redstone video. It's been a really long time since I've done one of these. I'm really excited to showcase what I've just made. So what you can see behind me here is the vault and what you can see next to me are the combination locks for that vault. And you can see right here that if I change one of these to a different one, the vault closes off and it actually works so you have a possible 512 combinations that you can use right here to lock away your precious shiny blues. So we can mess around with a few of these, just close them off, set everything back to zero so I actually know the combination already I know that it's 652 so I'm gonna turn this around so that it's six clicks away five clicks away and two clicks away and it's gonna open up for us right there and what I'm gonna do over the next couple of minutes is show you how to make this for yourself firstly I want to give a shout out to my buddy JPM2 he'll leave a link to his channel below he does technical videos and he was the one who pushed me to make this tileable and this mess that you see right here beneath you is what we're gonna be building in today's episode but I do want to reassure you because in reality all we're gonna be doing is building three of these we're just gonna build three of these little modules right here and that's gonna work as our combination lock right here and I'm going to show you how to. You may have seen a short that I did already on how to calculate an exact red zone signal. We're going to use that technology right here to make this combination lock. So just to cover some of the basics in case you don't know you can take a redstone signal from a book that's sitting on a lectern and with a comparator coming off it I've got the vanilla tweaks uh, redstone signal strength sitting there so that we can see what the values for each of them are. If I turn this it goes to five. If I turn this again it'll go to six. In case you didn't know about this as well well, you can continue the strength of a piece of redstone by adding a comparator, then a comparator, 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 and you'll see that it comes out and we have two, three, and you can actually, if you need to, just in case you didn't know, you could do this. Let's cover a few more examples. You can do this, and now that three is popping out right here, four, five, and it just takes a second for it to come around because it has to go through all of the comparators. Six, seven, eight, and then back to one. And there we go. So now that we've covered some of the basics, uh, what we're going to be using for this is the lectern. And we're going to put 15 pages into it. This one has eight in it. And you can see here, if I actually do this now, eight, nine, seven, six, right? If I put this on page five, I get a signal strength of nine, which is not what we want. So if you put in 15 pages, let's go up to page five again, you have a signal strength of five. If we change it to seven, we get a signal strength of seven. And that's because there are 15 pages in this book. That's really essential so that each one gives one point of redstone towards it. So now we have this crazy looking task of building one of these. But like I said, this is just three of these. So I'll give you a second and see if you can spot all three of them. It's pretty clear. Because they're marked out by target blocks. And you'll see that even the shape is pretty much the same. We just have a lectern going into a comparator that's going into another and then there's going to be a torch, repeater, target block and that's all we need. So look there's another one. There's our lectern going into a comparator into the side of another one. It's going to go on top of a torch, repeater and then into a target block and that's all we need to make this open and close. So I've just come over here where we have a little bit more space and where we're going to start is with our input and this is where we're going to actually have the combination lock and you can put any item in here that you like I think the tripwire hook kind of looks like a key which works for me but we'll use redstone uh, torches just as an example here and the first thing you want to do is put down your comparators to take a signal from those and you see we already have a signal strength of one because there's an item in there and now we're gonna do the easy ones and basically the easy ones are the two on the side and what we're gonna do is take our lectern and now I've already written out this book so it's got the 15 pages in it you'll have to do that now yourself so here we go 15 pages um, put down a comparator here we go put in our book and put down the comparator and now this is one of the more essential things that you have to do you have to put these comparators into subtract mode and you'll see what's happened is this is turned off we're not getting a signal from these anymore and i'll just demonstrate that and that's because we are we have a value of one here and we have a value of one here so one minus one is zero 
Now, if I change this to 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. And that's how we end up here. And then, depending on the code that you want, you choose the uh, the page in the book that you want. So a trick that you may or may not know about, if you use a repeater or a comparator, you can actually power up a block here. So I'm just going to make this just a little bit stronger so we have a signal to work with. And if you put a block on top, when we put some dust down, you'll see the power goes into the block and then onto the dust below. So that's what we're going to use right here. I'm just going to break up and make some space for me to do what I need to do here. So to get our exact redstone signal, we want to put some dust here and some dust here, right? And then we'll put a torch here, which is off. That's good, that's what we want. But we also want to put in a repeater in here, a repeater right here, and a target block, and that going in there, which is perfect. And then we put our torch on top, and now, we can see if this torch turns on, we have the correct signal strength. So right now it's on three, that's too strong. We need to turn it around and we'll see this turn on. You can see the torch there in the kind of the top left as I'm flicking this around now. And when I get to, there we go. And it turns on and that's exactly what we want because the signal strength coming through here is strong enough to turn this off but it's not strong enough to turn this back on and now this is where it gets slightly more complicated because how do we take a read from this one well we use the trick that we used over here to have this extend along and now I hope that this shape and this mess over here is starting to make a bit more sense. As you can see from here, we're going to move this one, two, three, four away from where we originally started and continue on the signal. So let's go down here. Two, three, four. And then, now that we have a bit of space to work with, we're not in the way of this anymore. We can put in our lectern, put in our 15 page book, put down the comparator, set the comparator to turn off. You can see that because that is one and the book is one, it's now turned to zero, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And then we're just gonna build another one of these modules right here. And also you don't need to use this trick where you power the block underneath. I was just doing it for compacting reasons, but if we do this instead, we can get the exact same effect. And we just put dust here, dust here, and do the same shape. Our repeater goes on top of here, and then the target block, and then the dust. And we're gonna put our torch on top, and it makes no difference. So we can see here, that's all looking pretty good right now. So what we wanna do is we wanna turn this to two. That torch is on, so this torch is off and that's a signal strength of three, so we need to put this in the position of four. And now all three torches are on, which means we have the correct combination for the books that we have. So I'm gonna put another block and torch on top of all of these. And then we're gonna put... And then we're gonna connect these up like so. So I'm just going to throw a sticky piston here to give you an example of this now, right? So all of our combinations are correct. This is the correct layout for what we want. And if I change one of these, you're going to see that our piston extends, our door locks, right? Because when a piston is extended, it's in the locked position. So you want all of these switched off. So if we go back around to the correct combination again, you see that the door opens. And we can set the combination here. So we're going to set this one to, let's set it to three, which is the last one. We'll set the middle one to four. And I think this one is, we'll set this one to five. So it's pretty easy to remember. So we're going to go three. This is on two already. So up one. So we've got one more. And let's see, is that torch on? That's perfect, that's what we want. So this is powering this torch to turn it off, but it's not strong enough to turn this repeater on. We're gonna set this to one more. So let's see, is that torch on? That torch is on now, this one here. And we got our combination correct. 
So yeah, this is basically our whole finished module here. I'm sure everybody knows how to make uh, two sticky pistons connect up to each other and get powered with redstone, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to do that, but uh, you can do something like this. Um, you can make that go down one, up one, whatever. I did a two wide in this example to be a little bit lazy, um, and I have the signal going underneath the blocks here to uh, to power it this way but like I said you can use any sort of door and that just goes under where you can't see it and you can enter the vault that way so just some things to remember is that this is your number subtraction whatever you put into the book is the number that you subtract so basically so while the uh, torch is in this position here this is a signal strength of one which we'll put in here then you turn it and that changes to two, change it here, change it to three, this is four, and this is a signal strength of five, six, seven, and eight. So you want to figure out where you want your torch to point. So let's say you want to pointing at number five, for example. So what you want to do is set your book to number four and that will work perfectly. So let's just test that out right now. If I change this book to number four, don't forget it has to have 15 pages in it. You change that to number four and we want it to work when it's at number five, which is upright, because maybe you want to remember it with uh, how they're pointing instead of the numbers or the combinations. And then you turn it this way, and you'll see that all the torches turn off and the door will unlock. The piston is not powered. But if we change that, the piston's powered, the door is locked. So this is actually a few days before uh, 1.20 has been released and basically I've loaded up into release candidate uh, 4 I think for the newest update just to show you how you can use this with chiseled bookshelves as well. So we have the same setup as before where I set this book to 5, this book to 4 and this book to 3. And um, basically chiseled bookshelves work by giving off the signal of the last, unfortunately, sorry, we don't have the numbers on the redstone because I don't have that on the update this time, but we can take a look with the F3 menu and you can see on the right side, it says power six. And then if we put this in here, it says power one and it gives off the power of the last slot that the book went into or was removed from. So we can put this in here and then remove this. And this is still six because it was the last one that was interacted with. So we know from our previous test before that this was set to six, this one was set to five, and this one was set to four, which was the previous test that we did. I've just uh, broken down the item frames here and put in the bookshelves instead. So if we put in a book in the sixth slot, we remove a book from the fifth slot, and we remove a book from the fourth slot, our door will open. So you can use this again if you want to close that off. Just put one in a different position, put one in here. And again, this works from the last book that was interacted with. So we can go six, five, four, and it'll open like that. Uh, I think that's a really cool way to use some of the new features and that'll lock off again so long as you just have a little mess around and make sure that you didn't use the sixth, the fifth, or the fourth slot here. And again, you can set that to absolutely anything you want. Uh, based on the book that you use here, what page of the book you set this to. So I hope this was really helpful for you. Um, I know it looked like a bit of a mess at the start and then we kind of broke it up into little pieces and hopefully it was super clear. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. All the best. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special...